It's been a minute since I've had time to work on these blocks, but I've got some time and I'm ready to dig in. Hey friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video, we're going to work on block number five for the Bright Side Quilt Along. This was a block of the month program that was included in our sew sampler boxes starting in April 2021 and ending in March 2022. If you were not a Sew Sampler subscriber for all of that period of time, don't worry. You can pick up any missing patterns from their website. You can either get the physical card or a download for about $4.98. If you are interested in picking those up, I will have a link to each and every single block, even the ones I haven't sewn, in the description box down below this video. So you can hop down there and check that out. For block number five, I have all of my fabric cut. I'm not going to give you cutting instructions in this video because then that would defeat the point of you buying the pattern. Not my pattern, can't give away cutting instructions, but I can show you with my fabric cut and labeled according to the pattern, how to put this block together. So let's get started. All right, for step number one, we're gonna grab our C and our E fabric. On the wrong side of our C fabric, we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. We have four pieces of our fabric E and we only need three. So I'm going to set the one aside and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take our squares and make some flying geese units out of these rectangles. And the way we do that is by sewing the wing on one side of the body for all three of these first and then doing the other one. We take our square, line it up on our rectangle so that that diagonal line is going from the corner down here up to the middle at the top. And we're going to stitch just a thread next to the outside of this line that we drew, and then we'll trim it away, press it open, and we should have something that looks like that. And once it's pressed open, then we'll do the other wing. Whenever I'm making flying geese like this, after I've sewn my first line, I like to sew a second line about a half inch away from that first line. That way, when I trim my wing, I have a bonus half square triangle unit that I can put in a bin and use for a future project. I seriously keep a little container on the shelf behind me where I put all these bonus half square triangle units. I feel like you can make so much stuff with a half square triangle. Have I done anything with them? No, but the collection is growing. Now I'm gonna press these open. First, I'm going to finger press it just very gently just to get that fabric laying in the right direction. This is what I call nudging the seam. And then I take a hot iron and come in and press that really nice and flat. Now I'm going to repeat those steps to put the wing on the other side of the flying geese.
And just like that, we have three beautiful flying geese units. We're only going to need two for the second step, so I'm going to take one and set it aside. The remaining two, I'm going to join side by side, just like this, and press the seam open. To press the seam open, I like to put my fingers in there, hold it down, run it along that seam, and then set my hot iron on top of it and really convince it to lay flat. This is going to be the top of our heart. We're going to set this aside and move on to the next step. We're going to grab one of our F fabrics, one of our G fabrics, and that triangle of E that we didn't use in our last step. We're going to sew the fabric in this orientation. So we should have our long strip of E on the right, our G in the middle, and then our small F square on the left. And in this case, our seams are going to press towards that red fabric. Now that we're finished with this, we're going to set this aside and we're going to grab our A and D fabrics. And we're going to make two half square triangle units from these two squares. We're going to turn our A fabric over, and on the wrong side of the fabric, we're going to draw another diagonal line from corner to corner. Then we're going to put the fabrics together, right sides together, and we're going to sew about a quarter inch, just under, I would say, from either side of this drawn line. Then we're going to cut this apart on that line that we drew. And now we have two triangle pieces that when we open them up, they're squares made of two different fabrics. We're going to press this up towards fabric D. And then I am going to take just an extra step to square these up to make sure they are perfectly sized for the next step. The way I square up my half square triangle units is I get a square ruler and I put this 45 degree line right on top of the seam for the two fabrics. And then I make sure that the size that I'm squaring to, the fabric is right at or beyond the line on the left and the right side of my ruler. And I do that for all four sides. Here are the two half square triangle units that we just made. And we're going to take our final F and G fabrics, and we're going to make another row for our heart. Take the half square triangle units so that the background fabric is pointing down into the left for the piece on the left. Then you're going to take your F fabric and put it next to it. Your G fabric is going to go next to that. And then your last half square triangle unit is going to be in the right position with the background pointing down into the right. So if I were to turn this around, so this is what your row should look like. Two half square triangle units on either end with the background fabric pointing down in an opposite directions. And then your G 
and F fabrics. We're going to take all three seams and press everything towards this lovely fabric. So this is going to go here and both of these are going to go over here. That row's done. Let's set this one aside and we're going to pick up our last pieces, which is one of the flying geese units that we made in the first step and our two remaining B squares of fabric. This one's super easy. This is going to make the bottom of our heart. So we're going to lay our flying geese so that it's pointed down. But honestly, you can sew this in any orientation because no matter what you do, it's always going to be sewn the same. We're going to take our B squares and sew one to each side of that flying geese unit. The instructions say that the seams for this should press out to these squares that are in the corners. And now our last step is to sew all four of these rows together to make a beautiful heart block. This is the bottom row of our heart. Then we're going to take the row that has the two half square triangle units on either end and put this here. My second row is going to be the other one with the blue in it, and I want to make sure that the blues are in opposite places so I look like I'm kind of getting a four patch effect in the middle of the heart. And then the row that's made of two flying geese units is going to go on top. I'm going to sew this, this, this together, and I'm going to press all of them down towards that row. <laughs> I'm just taking the time to finger press the seams as I go. I'll give this block a really good press after this final seam is done. For my final press, I'm going to press the block from the back. And that's just going to make sure that all of my seams are going in the direction I want them to go in. It's a little bit easier for me to get the blocks to lay in the right direction when I can see where they're supposed to be going. I give it a little tug to make sure that each piece is not got any tucks in it where the seams are supposed to be pressed and then once those are all pressed kind of in the direction I need them to be I give it a good press from the top a dry press first to make sure everything's laying nice and flat and then this is my real trick I spritz it with some best press because I like my blocks to have lots of body to them. I'm going to grab my iron, and I'm going to really give it a nice, good steam press or starch press, whatever it is that you do 
once your block is all done. And it's important for me to do this before I square up my block because that allows my block to be as flat as possible before I trim off any pieces. Now, if I had any really bulky seams in this block, which I don't, and I needed it to be even flatter, I could finish off my pressing with a nice square size clapper. If you don't know what a clapper is, let me show you. When I'm done pressing my fabric, it's nice and hot. And fabric, like every other fiber, has memory to it. So when I put this piece of wood on top of my seams, it is absorbing the heat from the fabric while applying a constant and even pressure to the seams, which allows the fabric to cool in this ultra flat position, meaning that the memory for the fabric is going to remember to stay super flat. So the way I get my blocks to lay super, super flat is a combination of lots of pressing, starch, and clappers. There's actually a local artisan in my area that makes these clappers by hand. And so if you are willing or want to support a local artisan, I will put a link for his clappers in the description box down below. I love mine. He makes some square size and he makes the traditional tailor's clappers, which are just long rectangular pieces. So this is block number five for the Bright Side So Long. I am super excited to finally be making some progress on this one. I am really excited to start the next Sew Sampler block of the month, but in order to do that, I want to have this one done first. So these videos are probably going to start hitting the channel pretty quickly. If you liked what you saw here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and come on back for block number six. I sure hope you'll sew along with me. I'll see you all then. Bye.